Safari, there's Microsoft, and here to describe how incredibly easy it is to port games to BlackBerry is Anders. Thank you very much. So thank you guys for coming, and it's always a pleasure to be here at Casual Connect, uh, moving to San Francisco this time. So I'm the global head of the gaming category at BlackBerry, and uh, I've been at BlackBerry for about two and a half years, and I was in the gaming industry for almost 15 years before that, running my own studio, did Xbox and PlayStation games and, and mobile stuff. So I've sort of been on, on the other side of the table and, and uh, being annoyed with OEMs and platform owners trying to lock me in and limit me to what I was be able to, to do to go cross-platform and, and monetize my IPs and products. So when I started at BlackBerry, they had just started to build what was, the f what was to become BlackBerry 10, the future of, uh, of BlackBerry and, and, and the next generation of mobile. And uh, so what we did, uh, yeah, so this, these are the devices. They were launched in January, by the way, so I'm not sure if anybody could miss that. Uh, so it's really great to be here now with actual devices in the market compared to last year. And uh, so what we did two and a half, three years ago was to basically, when I came in, say developers need to monetize uh, on more than one platform because it's getting more and more crowded and they want to focus on adding end user value. So we, we shouldn't really build our APIs and tools and services in a way that locks in developers. So the idea is basically to make sure that it's as easy as p possible for developers to go across platform and, and to start making money in a parallel revenue stream. So that's what we did. We started porting all the native APIs to make sure that they were uh, concurrent with what developers were used to on iOS and Android, uh, and, but also for console developers and PC, et cetera. We started to port um, all the traditional open source projects that the people use, the bullet physics, Lua, et cetera, et cetera, and, and looked at documentation and everything basically from the ground up. So about three years ago, we acquired a company called QNX, and that's the operating system we're using in BlackBerry 10 today. And it's basically a microkernel uh, Linux system that is running in all Cisco routers on the internet, for example. The space station is running. Most of the stuff in, in Las Vegas is running QNX, and, and it's been around for 15, 20 years. It's a very, very small, lean, and robust, and secure operating system. And uh, once you, if you uh, boot up Unity and deploy one of your Unity games on, on a BlackBerry 10 device, you will see how smooth and high the frame rate is compared to any of the of the competitors in the market today, even if the hardware might be slightly lower spec if you look at just the, the, the chips, uh, chip specs in the device. Uh, and that's thanks to, to the UNX operating system. And, and uh, we also acquire other companies like Cellmania for app stores and Torch Mobile for the fastest and best HTML technology and TAT, f uh, which is a big user experience design company for, for the user experience on the devices. And Scrollloop, which is a cross-platform social API for leaderboards, achievements, virtual goods, etc. And that is available cross-platform. So it was really important for us to build a secure platform to make sure piracy and those kind of problems and viruses and malware in other more open platforms, they would be subject to all of those things. So, and the BlackBerry pedigree of, of being used to be a business device, all of those values that were valuable for companies are actually really interesting for developers as well and for consumers because you don't want to have the PC kind of situation when, when everybody's moving to mobile now. Uh, so it's based on POSIX and, and uh, C++. Uh, platform basically with all the standards, OpenGL 1, 2, and, and now 3 is coming as well. Uh, everything that developers are used to to be able to go cross-platform. So we're not trying to confuse by doing different rendering APIs or anything else, Objective-C, et cetera, et cetera, just to make it as easy as possible for to have one unified code base for developers. Uh, also on the device fragmentation side, the devices uh, we, we came out with, we have two different form factors. One is a, a traditional uh, 69 kind of time uh, view, which has 1280 by 768 pixels, and the other one is 720 by 720 and full touch. And apart from that, it's the same hardware, the same GPU, same performance. And I can demo some games afterwards if you haven't seen them or, or come to our booth and try them out. So it's very, very easy for developers to develop for these, these two form factors. Some games might not work on a square screen because of the density of interaction in the game, but some racing games and stuff work really, really, really well. And those are high volume mark, uh, devices for us in, in, in markets. Uh, and BlackBerry today, we're over 70 million devices in, in the market worldwide, and uh, they're very, very loyal users that are just waiting for an affordable version of this phone to be able to make the transition or get out of their subscription that they have with their local carrier. So we're working with over 650 carriers worldwide uh, already. So, so they are rolling these new devices out in, in the different markets right now, beating Colombia, South Africa, or the United Kingdom, or the United States, or Canada, etc. So we're not in all markets yet, but I don't know how many we're out in. It's, uh, P probably 100 at least. Yeah, well, pretty much. Everyone, all, yeah. All of Latin America, yeah. European, African. 
So the, the, the device to the right there is like a uh, cheaper version of, of the, the Q10, which is uh, the touching keyboard one, and uh, it's a much, much cheaper targeting, but the, exactly the same hardware, slightly lower fidelity on the screen, but it's much, much cheaper. So if you're building your game for, for Q10, it automatically runs, because all of the specs are the same, same memory and everything. So what we did, which we started two years ago and started to, to, to port all, the, all of the, the Lua's and, and the Bullet Physics and, and the Cocos 2DX, et cetera, et cetera, and put them up on github.com slash BlackBerry. So just go there if you're doing Cocos 2DX, for example, download the BlackBerry version and, and, and recompile, and, and, and you're up and running. And if there's something that you, you, you can't find that that you're using that is in the open source community, just mail me or, or RAM here, and uh, we'll port it for you and put it up on, on, the, on the repositories to make sure that we do the heavy lifting for you. Some developers that I speak to, they're, they're looking into doing HTML5 as well, and it's been troublesome to do it because of compatibility issues and, and, and specs, depending on what kind of model of Android or, or whatever they're running on. And this is HTML5test.com that, that, that frequently tests both the performance and, and uh, compatibility. And you can see we, we're scoring 485 points, uh, even compared to, to Chrome or Firefox on desktop. Uh, the, the device uh, version of BlackBerry 10 is just much more compatible and, and really high performance. So if you're, if you're doing HTML5 uh, apps, uh, BlackBerry is, is the no-brainer to, to put your, your content on as well. And some of the updates we're doing now this summer in the new version 10.2 that is coming, HTML5, uh, we're moving that over to uh, Cordova. Uh, and uh, there are major updates as well in the, in the UI frameworks. Uh, a QT, and, and we're adding stage 3D accelerated flash. I spoke with several developers yesterday that are starting to, to use uh, accelerated flash here. I don't know if any of you guys in here uh, are using flash, but so, so that, that is uh, going to give you more oomph uh, when, when you're doing flash stuff. And uh, we're also actually running Java uh, Android sandboxed on, on our devices. And uh, we're bumping that up to 4.2.2 this summer as well, which means that you can basically just repackage your APK file, put it on the device, and it, I bet you it runs better on, on the BlackBerry 10 device than 95% of all Android devices. So it was really high performance. And the benefit as well of running Android on a BlackBerry device is that it's completely sandboxed and secure. So it's never going to be able to access your address book or, or, or your contacts or your Facebook account or, or those kind of things. So it's a secure way of, of running Android content on, on, your, uh, on, your, on your mobile phone. Uh, we're also working with a lot of the, the tooling companies uh, and, and also making sure that we have the right development tools for game developers. And personally, I come from the console space originally, and for, for us, we lived and died by using Visual Studio, re regardless of what we did. Developed and, and ran it on, on the desktop screen, and then we ported it to, I mean, to, to, to if it was iOS, we had a, a, a chain to be able to build that or, or build to Android or build to Xbox or build to PC or, or whatever. So we have an integrated... Um, plugin for Visual Studio where you can actually do even do over the air debugging with your project. So if you're in Visual Studio, you can just download that for free from our developer site. But we're working with everyone basically. So Flurry just came on board uh, like a month or two ago. Uh, Cocos 2DX obviously, the Photon uh, real-time multiplayer APIs are there. We ported Ogre, Shiva, Marmalade, Scoreloop and uh, FMOD, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The, the list is long. And last Monday of last week, Unity also announced that they they're supporting BlackBerry 10 now. So it's iOS and Android and uh, and BlackBerry 10 that they're supporting the free version of Unity. And the full Unity Pro version is on par as well with uh, iOS and Android. And the in-app purchase API plugin, I think it's coming this week. Yeah, it's it's already in beta and it's available, so it's for yeah. free. Um, I think most platforms you have to pay for the plugins but we're doing yeah. for free so yeah so we, we we made sure that 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 all of those services are available for free as well as plugins for unity when when you're deploying uh, so we're running a lot of programs as well to enable developers. So if you're on Marmalade today, there's a, a program running right now. If you contact Marmalade or go to their madewithmarmalade.com slash BlackBerry. If you bring one of your games to, to BlackBerry 10, we will give you a full pro license supporting all platforms for a full year as well. Uh, we did a, a similar one around Christmas time, I think, and had thousands and thousands of developers bring, bring their content to the platform. Uh, similarly, uh, Unity Pro now, part of, we're part of the free Unity license as well, and we have a lot of programs. If you're in Unity and want to try out the performance, I can help you get access to, to a license and, 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 a, and a device as well. So just uh, shoot me an email or find me here at the conference. And uh, I think we had over 2,000 developers, Unity developers, in our closed beta 
uh, leading up to the launch last week, and, and uh, many of them ported 10 of their games in, in like a day, and they say they have higher and smoother frame rate than on any of the other devices they're running on, and they're really happy. So Slightly Social was one of the companies. They released, uh, what's it called, bowling, rocket bowling, and, and, and some other games as well uh, last week, and uh, companies such as Freelunch Design, they announced that they're bringing all of their games to, to, to BB10 now via Unity, because it's so easy. Uh, we're also doing a lot of innovation in, in, the, in, the, in the gaming space, and we have only shown a little bit if you go to our booth. We're doing a lot of run micro-console gaming or more contextual uh, use of games. So if, if, why would I buy something that, is, that I have to sort of stick in the living room and it's stuck there like, like an Android console that is stuck to my TV? And then when, if I'm going to play with those games with my friend, I have to sort of unplug it, bring a gamepad, and, and go over to him to play it. So basically... Any kind of Bluetooth gamepad that you have can be paired to any BB10 device today, just via USB, so even the Wii controller, and who hasn't got a Wii controller at home? So you can just Bluetooth pair it, and you can play those games, hook up your phone to your TV, and, and you, you have your console there. And when, when you're at your friend's, he might have a Bluetooth uh, Moga gamepad or a SteelSeries or, or something else, and, and those, those also connect to, to BlackBerry 10. So we're working with all of those uh, gamepad developers, and I don't know if you heard Apple recently announced that now they're having a unified API instead of having to download each SDK for each uh, gamepad. And so that's what we did about a year ago when we built uh, built it for BlackBerry 10 to make sure that it, we built it straight into the screen API. So it's very very easy with a few calls to map that to, and we standardized the A button, the B button, the back, etc. for each and every gamepad. So you don't have to download the different SDKs or anything. Just use what's already in our in our SDK or in the Unity plugin. If you're using a gamepad in Unity, it's like if def Xbox, if def PC, uh, PlayStation 3, or BlackBerry 10. So it's the same, no, no code necessary at all. And uh, so we're doing that, and we're doing a lot of things with NFC. Some of the developers now have like a poker game. So the only thing you have to do is NFC tap devices, and you're joining at the same poker table. And uh, on the TV screen now, in the new version that is coming, you can actually see the community cards on the TV. You see your personal cards on your phone, and you can just send a BBM invite to, to your friend who's in New York, who can, who's not sitting in your living room, for example. Those kind of things to make gaming more immediate and social, and especially for kids. Every time I come home, there are like five or six kids in the couch, and they're playing their the same game, but they're not really playing together. But I mean, when they had Nintendo DSs instead of iPhones or whatever, they, they, they played Mario Kart and stuff, and they played together. But nowadays, they play the same, but it's not really immediate, and, and they're not really laughing about how they ran into the, each other, etc. So those kind of more immediate contextual social experiences we're, we're doing a lot with. And I'm working with a lot of developers show, showing those things off as well. And uh, if you want to do something like that and have a great game that, that could benefit from, from showing why gaming is more fun when it's, when it's more immediate and, and, and contextual, I mean, just seek us up as well. So if you haven't been to our booth, we'll see. We'll, there we have it. We'll run this without sound or a little bit of sound. This is basically showing uh, one of the Unity games, Shadowgun, and it's uh, Bluetooth, Bluetooth connected to, uh, I think this is a Steel Series gamepad. Basically, an, any Bluetooth gamepad works, and it's 95% uh, of all gamers would, would think that this was an Xbox game if they came into the living room. And uh, with the next generation of OpenGL 3, etc. I mean, graphics quality is just so high that, that, that why wouldn't you want to be able to play it like this in the living room on the bus? I'm using the touch input, and in the hotel room, I might have a snap on gamepad if there's not a decent TV, for example. So there's a lot of things happening in this space, which is quite interesting. Also, when we launched in January, looking at our app store instead, we now have the fat biggest and fastest growing app ecosystem for a new mobile platform. So we launched with 70,000 applications in, in January when we had zero devices in market. And uh, four months later, we had uh, 120,000 apps in, in the market, and, and it's really hockey sticking. If you compare that to, to uh, to, to our competitors when they launched and we're four months in. So we have more than 10 times the, the number of apps coming. So there's a big interest because it's so easy to develop for BlackBerry 10 and, and they start getting a, getting a revenue stream. And uh, the, the BlackBerry App Store itself is, is exactly the same as you would on, on our competitors. It's 70-30 revenue split. We have the, exactly the same in-app purchase APIs, et cetera, et cetera. And we have a unified App Store. So there are over 20 million music tracks. So it's on par with iOS and Amazon and, and far more than, and availability is far bigger than on Google Play, for example, when it comes to the global, global reach of that kind of content. And the same for TV shows and, uh, and, um, and, and movies. We have uh, a lot of partnership with carrier billing, yep. so that makes the Asian uh, Asian gamers pay pay easily. 
to their credits and uh, the yeah. points that they get, yeah. that they earn. Yeah, so we, be we benefit from having those 600, 650 carriers worldwide that are actually running our infrastructure uh, and, and our service to, to, to host BBM uh, and, and our services. Uh, in terms in terms of how payment mechanisms actually uh, are facilitated for the consumers in the different regions. Uh, and then we also announced a couple of months ago in May uh, that BlackBerry Messenger, what most BlackBerry users die, live and die for, is the, our, our chat application that is, is, is market leading. It's going cross-platform now. And, and it's not going cross-platform only for the chat, but also for BlackBerry Messenger voice and video and screen sharing. Uh, so those apps will be made available on, on uh, iOS and Android as well uh, later this summer. And not only the apps, but actually the APIs for the developers, so they can actually do exactly the same things on iOS and Android uh, and on BlackBerry 10. Uh, so using that as a social graph and the immediacy of, of, of that kind of uh, uh, social uh, network. Uh, so today, already on BlackBerry, I think we have 60 million users or so that are using BBM every day, and there are 10 billion messages sent over BBM every day, and 50% of those are responded to within 20 seconds. Just imagine having that kind of social graph where five billion messages are responded to within 20 seconds. And on BlackBerry, these are BlackBerry users, and 80% of those BlackBerry users are consumers and not business users. So many things that BlackBerry is still just a, a, a brand for, for businesses. But looking in the UK, for example, women between 15 and 30 is the biggest demographic for, for BlackBerry. They they're live and die by, by their BlackBerry devices. And they're, they're playing games like everybody else today. So. With this kind of uh, social graph and, 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 and tools and APIs, um, it might pick up really, really quickly on iOS and Android as well, because there's so many advocates. And I think somebody put up a fake app a couple of weeks ago on Google Play, uh, and in three hours, we had 150,000 downloads of that fake app before uh, it was pulled, because it was obviously a fake. So there's a lot of interest in, in having a chat application with, with all of these features uh, cross-platform. So it's quite exciting to see how that's going to roll out, for sure. Let's see where we are. Uh, yeah, and then just to wrap it up before we take some questions, we only have 20 minutes today. Uh, usually I have a lot of partners on stage with me today uh, when I present at different conferences, but since we only have 20 minutes, I'm just going to summarize what uh, Stefan, for example, from, uh, from In Exile or Square One Games uh, talked about when, when uh, they, they got their hands on a Black Pretend device uh, and a playbook ab about a year ago. and. Uh, Two, three days later, they had ported their huge uh, RPG, the Bard's Tale, from iOS to, to BB10. And in 26 hours, they made all of their money back. So that was a really good investment for them uh, to do that. And for, for them, I mean, it was minor, minor things that they needed to do uh, to, to do all of those, including in-app purchases and... and uh, uh, and everything that they built into it. Uh, Ten Tons is a casual social developer based in Finland. And I similarly, last year's Nordic Game Conference, gave them a device. And a few days later, they came back and had 11 of their games ported to, to, to our platform. And they're continuing to bring it. And uh, like they say here in, 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 uh, in uh, Summa's quote, is on Android, they have about 2,000 specific lines for that platform because they have their own game engine. They're not using Unity or Marmalade or anything. On BlackBerry, they only have 400. Uh, lines of code that they had to write to be able to support uh, BlackBerry 10. So it's very, very easy if you have a clean C++ engine to add BB10 support. And one of the architects around our API is actually sitting here in the audience as well, Sean Paul Taylor, uh, on our internal gaming tech team. So if you have any follow-up questions, I mean, Sean is absolutely the right guy to talk about that. Uh, another in new indie developer that uh, it came on board both on Playbook and, and uh, and BB10 to speak about how they are seeing revenue. On iOS, obviously, they, they saw a lot more revenue as long as they were featured by Apple. The second Apple featuring stopped, they went down to zero dollars, basically, in West, the Western world. In China, they're, they're making a slightly more money. But uh, on, on BlackBerry, uh, they, they're seeing steady revenue. Every time we, we launch in a new country, it bumps a little bit, bumps a little bit. So if they're featured, they're obviously they're seeing five times the revenue of the weeks when they're not featured, similar to other platforms. But it doesn't drop down to zero. It drops down to, to a reasonable healthy level for them. And it, and it grows slowly upwards, upwards, upwards. So for, for them, uh, it was well worth the investment to, to bring it over. And I gave Daniel a playbook two years ago at, at GDC. The morning after, he came with three of his games ported. So even back then, before the was fully baked platform, it, it was just so easy for them because they were in pure C++. And to quote my friend Michael Shadi from Fish Labs, uh, bringing over Galaxy on Fire 2, a really big space shooter, took him one fucking day. So uh, for them as well, 
why not when when it is easy and, and now they're monetizing on, on another platform and have bigger brand exp uh, exposure for the platform so i think we have about two minutes left so if there are any follow-up questions after the conference please email me or or send me a message on twitter or or, or ram here if it's more technical question for sure and I can also help with seeding your devices and, 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 and uh, helping you connect you with the right people if you, if you want to try and bring over your content to Black Britain. Thank you very much. Do we have any immediate questions now for Anders? Or maybe I, I, I will ask one question. Um, of course. <laughs> BlackBerry users are fanatical in, in certain markets more than others. Uh, so if you wanted to target markets where you have the strongest install base, what stack ranking regions would you recommend developers go for first? Uh, for the new platform or for the old one? Probably for the new one, right? New, new yeah, so I mean, we're seeing really good success in, in, in Canada, obviously. That's the homeland of, of, of BlackBerry. But also in, in countries such as South Africa, uh, Britain, and uh, do we have other? Uh, well, in Latin America. Yeah, Latin America in general. Huge. Yeah, we are huge yeah. in Latin America for sure, and Indonesia as well. But we're just starting to roll out a little bit more affordable devices in those regions. So mm -hmm. we're expecting that to pick up really quickly now that we're making Q5 and some other devices we're not talking about here today. Okay. Uh. Any questions? If not, go and see sort of uh, Anders afterwards, and I'm sure be answering answer questions for you. Um, it's lunchtime now. Um, there's a women's lunch uh, going to be organized by Qualcomm, and that's in the plaza. Nice. And everybody else, there's plenty of other uh, lunch options available. And see you back at 1 o'clock. Thanks. Thank you. That was quick. <laughs>